Daily Planet got a sneak peek into a training session in Montreal, one that was preparing Canadian Army medics to deal with real life and death situations, just like the ones they'd face if they were deployed to Afghanistan. And as it turns out, one very smart dummy was a star attraction. Battlefield injuries are an inevitable consequence of warfare. Modern medicine has dramatically improved the odds of survival, but to save a life, the medical team treating a fallen soldier has to work together seamlessly. That expertise comes only with practice. This soldier has already been hit three times today. The team will patch him up and wheel him back in again in an hour or so. It's all a simulation, and that injured soldier is just a high-tech dummy. The mannequin uh, never takes break. Uh, never, it, it breaks though sometimes from time to time, but it never tires and uh, we can always use it and uh, we can uh, fashion it, we can moulage it, uh, moulage meaning that uh, we can uh, uh, apply makeups to uh, mimic an amputation, mimic an open fracture with the bone sticking out of the limb. Uh, it has a pulse, distal pulse, it has uh, reacting pupils, uh, it has uh, breathing sounds and breathing chest movement. Through the computer, uh, we can uh, ask it to have a faster heart rate or a lower heart rate and we can even uh, mimic blood sampling and uh, all those things. At McGill University's Trauma Training Center, 29 Army medics, only a couple of months away from the real battlefield, hone their skills in a two-week intensive course. In some labs, specialized mannequins are used to train specific skills. Like here, what we do have is a plastic uh, torso and on the torso we can add uh, the uh, pieces of uh, false skin but that, that, that has a texture of uh, human skin. The skin has to be cut, the finger has to be put in so that uh, we do feel the rib cage, we do feel the lung that is supposed to be there. Uh, and we have the exact same landmarks and the anatomy, uh, anatomy points and, and so that uh, we can do the technique itself. It's all fake, it's all uh, plastic, but uh, to replicate uh, very well the, uh, the, the human anatomy, um, we have heads and uh, necks so that we can practice our surgical airway, we can practice how to put a tube into the mouth and uh, trachea of the patient, we can practice all that. All tears ready? But it all comes together in the resuscitation room. It's like a flight simulator for medical teams. In here, groups of five or six medics are thrown into a carefully scripted scenario, lasting about 12 minutes. In an adjacent room, controllers watch it play out on monitors and through a one-way mirror. The simulation is not a one-man show. Uh, it's really a team effort, so we have a very uh, broad and uh, a lot of expertise here. It's not just a question of putting them in a scenario where there's a trauma victim. I mean, it has to be a lot more than that. There has to be a specific reason why this injury, why that trauma victim, why this location. Captain Myers, Thank Captain you. Myers, am I getting a response from the patient? Uh, 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 just moaning. Just the basic morning. scenario is worked out in advance, okay, well, but the controllers guide how it plays out. We can make some adjustments according to uh, something uh, happens that there was not planned, we can react and, and make it. Am I seeing any other additional wounds on this side of no, the body? No, no other wounds. Okay, on the One member of the control team is in the room with the trainees. As the simulation progresses, he acts as a go-between. There is constant talk between the observer on the floor and in the control room so that we can compensate what the computer cannot do. First in are two soldier mannequins wounded in battle. But then an unexpected arrival. Burka. An Afghan woman with an injured arm. She's an actor. And uh, can I have four units of uh, O please? Master Warrant Officer David Marshall's like a traffic cop. He sets the priorities. Okay, team, listen up. Uh, we're going to package the patient up, get him down to the OR. We're going to go in for an exploratory lap. We're going to crack the chest. It is close enough uh, so that uh, we can uh, practice uh, some uh, to train some reflexes, to train some reaction. Well, uh, let's say for example that the pressure drops uh, after giving such a medication. Well, then maybe that medication, medication is not all that good for that type of uh, illness. 
so that uh, as the more we train like that, we know that it will uh, replicate and it will reproduce in the actual real resuscitation of a patient. And all that training and repetition and that training and training and training actually translates into real life. Head over next door and uh, talk about it. Every aspect of the simulation is broken down and analyzed by the group. In the heat of the moment, objectivity gets lost, and memory can play tricks. You see, uh, actually, you said that you did take the pulse, but when? Because we don't see you take the pulse. You, uh, you actually didn't take the pulse. Or you did it, and, but you didn't remember that you did it, because some people, it was the opposite too. Oh, I don't remember that I took the pulse. I uh, told you the pulse was okay. But then we filmed, yes, you did take the pulse, uh, because when we are under stress, we, our memory is sometimes a little bit uh, not all that good of specific little details. It won't be long before the real stress of war surrounds them. We put them in a stressful situation, a stressful environment, so they have to deal with that. And that kind of stress and emotional activation really allows them to remember what are the key points that they need to uh, look at in, in dealing with a, you know, a major trauma victim. This is just a dress rehearsal. Nothing can never ready a fireman to uh, fight a fire until he is actually in the house that is under fire. That's for sure. But the more training that fireman has, the more he, well he is prepared. So that's exactly what we're doing with the medical team. Okay, we're going to stop the scenario here. Okay, thanks. Thank you all very much. Good job.